<clears throat> Madden Holiday is here and we will play all night. Call in sick and sound sincere in tackles will delight. The fridge is packed with drink and meat. The taste of victory sure is sweet. Well, last week was certainly surprising, wasn't it? I mean, it was on many levels in every sort of way, let alone the fact that probably the most surprising fact of all is that I actually managed to go 5-1. and one. Obviously, the, uh, the one in there is that Georgia Tech upset Miami, which makes the ACC now a one-big conference. Uh, I mean, it was pretty much how I said it was going to go for if Georgia Tech were to win. They had to ball control, eat the clock, run the ball, and do stuff like that, and that's pretty much what they did, and their defense managed to step up, stopping Miami multiple times on fourth down. Cam Ward and the Hurricanes really only had one, I'd say, decent drive at the beginning of the game, and then not really much else. And that wasn't even the only big loss of the weekend. I mean, you had Georgia, LSU, Iowa State continues to lose. BYU managed to luck out at the end and avoid having their first loss of the season after some questionable officiating against Utah. Now, on my other college games I predicted, well, those went pretty much by the book. Uh, Memphis to match squeaked by Rice 27-20, to and Florida State-Notre Dame also happened. Moving on to the NFL, I mean, Buffalo and Indianapolis went pretty much the way I thought it was going to, and surprisingly enough, the Cowboys did manage to hang with the Eagles for about a half, and then it all fell apart. And then the Detroit Lions-Houston Texans game happened, and, uh, Oh boy, I mean, for about three quarters, the Texans had this thing in the book, and then, uh, you know, Jared Goff had his five interceptions, only for the Lions to come back and win on a last second field goal. So obviously that means I had stopped watching the game at that point and missed everything. And let's not forget games like Kansas City and Denver, Tampa Bay and San Francisco, the Carolina-New York Giants game in Germany, Jacksonville, Minnesota, Pittsburgh and Washington. Those games were all mostly close and still very highly entertaining except for Minnesota and Jacksonville it just all kind of added up to a great kind of bizarre week of football let's move on to the games we're covering this week which include Wyoming versus Colorado State Arizona State versus Kansas State Alabama Birmingham versus Memphis then on the NFL side we have Baltimore versus Pittsburgh Seattle versus San Francisco and Indianapolis versus the New York Jets all right let's get to it Saruchi, hug me, Saruchi, love me, Saruchi, you got me, Saruchi, Saruchi. Designer styles that fit so good, make you look the way you should. Saruchi, hug me, Saruchi, love me, Saruchi, you got me, Saruchi, Saruchi. Available at fine stores everywhere. You know who makes the number one cookie in America? It's not who you might think. It's my mom. She makes Nestle Toll House cookies. Mom says you have to use Nestle real chocolate morsels in the original recipe on the bag or they aren't real Toll House cookies. Say, why not ask your mom to bake some? If you've been good, I'm sure she will. Nestle Toll House, America's favorite cookies made by America's favorite moms. We make your daughters dance, wake you to the sun. We bake your bread and light your way when day is done. We make you pretty, we make you smile. GE, we're in the business of making products that make your life a little easier, a little better. And you know something? That's a pretty nice business to be in. We bring you closer to the ones you love.
our first game is the border showdown for the Golden Boot between Wyoming and Colorado State. The Rams managed to use some major utilization of the transfer portal to elevate the record to 5-3 and three this year, with their only losses coming to what you would probably say are major opponents in Texas, Colorado, and to a lesser extent, Oregon State. The Rams also find themselves in unique positioning to make the Mountain West Conference Championship game, as they haven't had to play either Boise State or UNLV during the regular season, meaning now they'll only have to face them in said championship game. The Rams' main offensive weapon is running back Avery Morrow, and that leads to a very good ball control, time of possession, eating type of game. On the other side, Wyoming has just had kind of a down year, unfortunately. They got a new coach this year after Craig Bowles stepped down, and that's Jay Sawville, and, well, they're only 2-6, and six, and they haven't really panned out in any type of excitement. About the only real complimentary point is that Caden Anderson has played well under very difficult circumstances, but... Yeah, they haven't exactly put up a fight in a lot of their games, so they're a little down and out of it at this point. Now, this is a very heated rivalry, and I do expect the Cowboys to try to play up to the Rams, but the Rams have a lot to play for here. Again, if they win, they pretty much secure a spot in the championship game, so I think they're going to be a little more inspired here. They're a better team. I think Colorado State probably pulls this up by double digits. So yeah, I'm picking the Rams to win this. There's a place where images are made. Diane's on 57th Street. We weave hair as naturally as it grows on your head. Diane's exclusive interlock method is so lifelike, most clients can't believe it. Oh, Diane. Oh, Diane. <laughs> oh, Diane. Diane's on West 57th Street. We make you look like you've always seen yourself. Oh, Diane. This is me. Make it a child world Christmas, because prices are low and shopping is friendly and fun. Child world, everything your toy store should be. The first electronic football games like these were for only one player. And run. But something was missing. Can I play? Wait your turn. Then along came head-to-head -head electronic football by Coleco. Now we can play at the same time. I'm offense. I'm defense. With head-to-head, -head, you're really in the game. A power sweep. He fights through for the tackle. You pass. He blitzes. Intercepts. This is real competition. Why settle for a one-player game when you can have it all? Play alone, against the computer, or for real competition, play. Head-to-head. -head. Why settle for less? Next, Luther goes out with Christine's neighbor. I know a great date when I see one, and Luther did not have a great date. And Coach is in for a shock. I coach next. Wednesday, Kathleen. Oh, you... Billy. Yeah, yeah. And Robin. Woo! The Barbara Walters special right before Twin Peaks season finale, Wednesday. Tonight. We do have one advantage. Michael Stedman. Michael goes undercover to take over the ad agency. Someone is attempting to pilfer this company. A lie detector? The first person who should have his loyalty checked is me. 30-something season finale. Not here. This week, you'll find Twin Peaks in a special place at a special time. You're under arrest. Murder of Laura Palmer. Whatever else you find will depend on where you look. The season finale of Twin Peaks, tomorrow at 10, 9 central. Our next matchup is Arizona State taking on Kansas State in a game that looked a little more impressive when I selected it for the prediction show a few weeks back. Now, going into the season, Kansas State was my pick to win the Big 12. They lost to BYU, and then they lost another game to Houston, which is pretty much all but doomed their chances of making the Big 12 championship game. Now, the Wildcats are led by dual-threat quarterback Avery Johnson. Unfortunately, it does seem the offense has taken a step back since O.C. Colin Klein left to take over the similar position at Texas A&M. Added to that, the Wildcats' defense has been very hit and miss for Coach Kleinman this season. Arizona State, on the other hand, has been quite possibly the most surprising team in the Big 12. They do have an outside chance to make the Big 12 championship game, but they're going to need a few things to fall their way. Namely, they got to beat BYU in a couple weeks, and they need Colorado to slip up at least once. That being said, the Sun Devils do have a breakout star in the form of running back Cameron Scadabo, who definitely gives a lot of Christian McCaffrey-esque vibes in his play style. 
These efforts, combined with quarterback Sam Levitt's very solid play at the quarterback position, have led the offense to put up some decent numbers this year. Again, though, I think the major flaw with the Sun Devils is that their defense is very hit and miss at times. Still, the Sun Devils are definitely playing with a lot of enthusiasm, while the Wildcats just kind of aren't. ASU's the better team right now. They're probably going to take the lead and hold on for the victory here. Yeah, I know. I want to pick Kansas State, but again, I just have more faith in Arizona State right now. So yeah, that's why I'm picking Arizona State to win. This is not an ordinary muffler. It's an Everlast. Galvanized steel with tuning chambers that are calibrated by computers for sound control. And every Everlast muffler meets strict noise quality standards. There's only one place you can get the Everlast. At Meineke Discount Mufflers. A good muffler at a very good price. Everlast. Come see me, your local man from Meineke. I'm an exhaust system specialist dealing in quality. And you'll love the price. Well, from 1893 to 2695. Visit your local independently owned Meineke shop today. I'm Phil Rizzuto for The Money Store, where we believe when you need money, you probably need it in a hurry. If I apply for a loan at The Money Store, how long will I have to wait for approval? If you're a qualified homeowner, I'll be able to give you instant approval right now by phone, and you can choose a long-term repayment plan to suit your budget. For information about homeowner first or second mortgage loans, call The Money Store toll-free. Dial 1-800-221-9000. How did you know? Ooh, how did you know? How do you know what someone you love would love for Christmas? Just come to Zales. As the world's largest jeweler, who would have more of what more people want? It's beautiful. <laughs> From Zales? How did you know? <laughs> no one knows more than the diamond store. Zales. I am the electronic judge in the game of the generals, a great strategy game where it's my responsibility to tell the players the results of each encounter. And I do it without revealing the rank of either piece. Hmm, there's the move that just won the game. The generals from Ideal. I make it very challenging. Our next matchup is the Alabama-Birmingham Blazers taking on the Memphis Tigers, and yeah, we're covering Memphis two weeks in a row here. There's not really much to say about the Tigers, except, again, their pros and cons are pretty much the same as they were last week. This is kind of why I don't like covering teams in consecutive weeks. Anyway, UAB is 2-7 and seven on this year. Uh, most of their losses have not been close outside of an 8-point loss to UConn. Uh... Head coach Trent Dilfer is struggling at best here. He's trying his best. He's built up the quarterback, Jacob Zeno, who puts up some big numbers, but unfortunately, none of the other offense really seems... It doesn't translate to scoring. The stats are high, but the scoring is down. The defense can't really stop anyone. So, yeah, I'm picking Memphis to win this one handily. That's really all I've got to say. Nestle Crunch is so good, it's music to your mouth. Creamy milk chocolate is the melody. Crispy crunchies are the harmony. The two together are music to much. Let's come a few bars of Nestle Crunch. It's a good time for the great taste. Big Mac, Filet, Fish, Quarter Pounder, Fritz Fries. It's a good time for the great taste. McNuggets, Coke, Fake Shakes, Sundays and Pies. Here come McDonald's Fast Macs. Pull the cars back once, they roll straight. More than one full, they twist, turn, and loop. Four different Fast Macs, each 59 cents with any food purchase at participating McDonald's. Magic carriage and if mommy passes by, you can squeeze the handle of the carriage and make Karen wave high. Hi, Karen. 
You can raise her hands for a kiss or make her play peekaboo like this. Look what she does on my presser toppy. You can walk with Karen in her magic carriage and when mommy blows the balloon, you can make Karen fly the balloon. Karen in her magic carriage. Brattle and balloon included. Assembly required. From Ideal. Moving on to the NFL, we open things up with the Baltimore Ravens traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers in the latest chapter of what I think is the league's best rivalry right now. Yeah, I know there's all sorts of ones. There's, you know, Eagles, Cowboys. There's maybe, you know, well, pretty much everyone, Cowboys. Maybe 49ers, Rams, Seahawks, 49ers, somewhere in there. Uh, Vikings, Packers. Again, to be honest, though, this is really the best one. It's always highly competitive. It's always intensely fought. Almost all of the games have playoff ramifications, especially over the last 25 years. So, yeah, I don't see that being any different this year. And, again, that's kind of why I think it's the best rivalry around right now. Now, the Ravens have really seemed to figure out their offensive woes from earlier on in the season. Derrick Henry is running the ball really well. Lamar Jackson is spreading the ball around to his wide receivers in the passing game. Overall, the offense is playing really fine. If there is a fatal flaw to the Ravens, it's that I do think their defense is just getting banged up at the wrong time to have that happen. The most recent one seems to be the injury that affected Kyle Hamilton on Thursday night. I don't know if he's necessarily out for this game just yet, but again, you have to kind of look at that and say, there are some problems brewing right here, and again, that seems to be the fatal flaw on the Ravens here. The Steelers, on the other hand, have also picked things up on offense. Russell Wilson is actually throwing the ball really well. He definitely picked up the passing game from Justin Fields. Again, Fields wasn't even playing bad. He's just that Russell Wilson is a better quarterback right now. And it seems that Najee Harris has re revived... And it seems that Najee Harris and Jalen Warren have really revived the running attack, even though Najee Harris is also hurt. Added to that, the Steelers' defense is still very top-flight and top-level elite, with T.J. Watt and the like. However, uh, the fact that Alexander Highsmith is also hurt, that could also wind up being a bit of a hindrance overall to the Steelers. That being said, in the end, I do think the Ravens' concerns on defense completely outweigh the Steelers' concerns on defense. The Steelers are kind of a better all-around team. I expect this to be very close, very hard fought, but I have to give the slight edge to Pittsburgh. They're playing at home. They'll probably wind up winning by a field goal. It's going to be a hard-fought game. It's going to be close. It's going to be exciting. It's definitely going to be entertaining, but I think the Steelers will win in the end. Let's check the scoreboard and see how Coleco's head-to-head -head electronic baseball stacks up against the competition. Sure, some games have base stealing and pitch selection, but for real two-player action, only head-to-head -head baseball has computed batting averages for each player, hitting for average or for extra power, 16 pitching variations, including a pitch out, extra inning scoring, and more. It's no contest. Get head-to-head -head electronic baseball by Coleco, now that you know the score. Child world, child world, let's take a look and see. On sale this week, Hasbro's Hungry Hungry Hippos, the hippos that munch marbles only $8.97. Knickerbocker's Dolly Pops Pop Town, it's all day fun, just $12.87. Computer Command from LJN, program a 1980 Corvette and watch it go, only $29.97. And as Peter Panda says, it's so nice to know that prices are low and shopping is friendly and fun. Child world, everything is going so Arvid's in mourning, big time. Who died? My dog! And he's not letting go very easily. Arvid, you are over this dog thing, aren't you? Yes, Dr. Samuels, I am. What's in there? My dog. Everyone's running out of sympathy. You know, I think you may have something here, Arv. Add a little hot water. Cup of dog. Will a Fido funeral get rid of his grief? Oh, let's just get a dust buster and get it over with quick. The end result on Head of the Class. Tonight at 6.30 on PHL 17.
Our next matchup is the Seattle Seahawks taking on the San Francisco 49ers, two teams that have been very hard for me to wrap my head around this year that represent a division that's been very hard for me to wrap my head around this year. Now, the 49ers do appear to have turned a corner with Christian McCaffrey returning. They're getting healthy. They're getting their guys off the injury list right around this good time. Ricky Parasol is stepping up to fill in for the injured Brandon Ayuk. George Kittle is returning to form, so things are looking very good there. If there is a major fall, but... If there is a major problem, it's that I do think the defense is still pretty questionable at times. Again, they're still de- they still have a lot of guys on injured reserve. Uh, I think that's still affecting them a little bit. But again, they're getting healthy at just about the right time here. Now, throughout this season, the Seattle Seahawks have looked unstoppable at times and then completely inept the next week. I think you could chalk a lot of this up to the inexperience of new coach Mike McDonald. I think there's some problems. Like I said, his inexperience shows. That's the major flaw there. I do think Geno Smith is bringing the offense into form here. He's playing very well. The running game seems to be building up very slowly. I think the main fault is that, ironically enough, as McDonald was brought in as a defensive expert, Seattle's defense is just playing really flat in the last few weeks, and that's where the real struggle is. Added to that, the last time there was two... Added to that, the last two times these teams played, it was in Seattle and San Francisco won going away, so that doesn't exactly help. And the fact the 49ers are getting back into a healthy form is definitely a bonus in their aspect, especially playing at home. I think the 49ers are going to win this game rather handily. Again, Seattle's a good team, but I just think the 49ers are a little bit better right now. They're obviously a little bit healthier. This is the Sarah Coventry Fall Collection, glistening new pieces for the neck, the fingers, the ears, the wrist, and lapel. You can touch and see and try on the entire collection only at a Sarah Coventry Jewelry Home Fashion Show. So call now for details, 800-448-7000. The Fall Collection by Sarah Coventry, 800-448-7000. There's no dashboard light to warn you. No dipstick to check. Yet when warned, they could cause your car to lose control and break it. Don't find out your shocks and struts are worn by accident. Get your shocks and struts inspected at your Monroe retailer soon. Monroe, your safety could depend on it. These people were killed accidentally by a colorless, odorless gas, carbon monoxide. My husband carried this picture in his wallet for 21 years. I woke up in the hospital and uh, Patty never woke up. We gave our pictures to First Alert to help prevent more needless deaths. Get a First Alert carbon monoxide detector for your home. Please, before it's too late. Our final game is the Indianapolis Colts taking on the New York Jets in a game that was flexed from Sunday night to early Sunday morning. Well, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, so... You pretty much the Joe Flacco sans is over in Indianapolis. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Anthony Richardson back. Maybe not this week, but probably the next week. Uh, Flacco did not provide the spark to the offense I think a lot of people were expecting. Uh, Everyone is just playing really flat. They're not really doing anything of note. Again, they came out very flat against the Bills. They gave up that pick six. It's just not looking very good. Then again, if the Indianapolis Colts were looking flat, the New York Jets were looking basically completely ingrown against the Arizona Cardinals. And to that, Aaron Rodgers got hurt. He was on the bench a little bit. The defense is all but dead at this point. They had to win out to uh, get through what slim playoff chances they had. Those are pretty much gone now. Yeah, so it's not exactly looking good in New York. That being said... The Jets may still actually technically be a better team than the Colts are right now, and that's a very strange thing to say. Yeah, in other words, this game is being very hard to pick for all the wrong reasons. I think the Jets have a slightly better running game, so yeah, I'm probably just going to go with the Jets there. Uh, Why not? I'm totally not padding this video out, by the way. I'm just trying to select a team. Anyway, let's, uh, let's wrap things up.
all it takes is for someone to say pizza, right? <laughs> and then they all got to have pizza until they give me a craving, too. We always get Totino's, but all of a sudden they've added a lot more to it, lots more toppings, and uh, the meats are bigger, and there's more of them, too. <laughs> I was really surprised. And Totino's crust is still crisp. Or something else I like. There's only one place they can get it. <laughs> Totino's new tempt and toppings. Pizza worth coming home to. Six easy things at home. New Jersey's parents are helping their kids at school. Parents and children for teachers too. Partners in learning at common school. It adds up. Yeah! Hey, want some hot Nestle quick? Thanks. Pass this cocoa to your father? Okay. It tastes great. Here, Dad. Well, and our cocoa tastes like it's made out of water. It is. I used instant cocoa mix. Your Nestle Quick so creamy. It's made quick with milk. It tastes more chocolatey. Quick has more cocoa in it. Helen, try this quick. Tell me it doesn't taste richer. Mmm. Can I have some quick? Families really love hot Nestle Quick chocolate flavor and milk. Okay, so to wrap things up, I like Colorado State over Wyoming, Arizona State over Kansas State, and Memphis over UAB. On the NFL side, I like Pittsburgh over Baltimore, San Francisco over Seattle, and the New York Jets over the Indianapolis Colts, I guess. Okay, so I guess on some uh, personal stuff right here, I am not on Twitter or X anymore. I decided to deactivate it after the election. Yeah, I mean, I took it hard, but um, also I had food poisoning that night for a double whammy. But again, I'd kind of been looking into getting out of there for a while. I did manage to pick up a lot of followers in the recent months, but I'm thinking most of those were bots. Um, barely anyone ever responded to my tweets anyway. Um, you know, I, I'm on Mastodon and Blue Sky. There's links for that in the description if you want to follow me there. So if you did follow me, I made a post about this, but just in case you didn't see it, yeah, that's what's happening there. I'll work on doing new title and end sequences uh, for 2025. But yeah, for now, you're just kind of stuck with them. Ignore the Twitter thing at the end, just like you probably ignore the comic forums bit at the end as those no longer exist either. Likewise, I may start an Instagram or Threads account. I'm still not entirely sure, but if I do, you'll be aware of it. Anyway, the next video is going to be predictions for the next week's games, and those include UNLV versus San Jose State, Indiana versus Ohio State, and Stanford versus Cal Berkeley. Then on the NFL side, we have Minnesota versus Chicago, Washington versus Dallas, and Philadelphia versus the Los Angeles Rams. For the next week's predictions after that, that's the Thanksgiving weekend. So we're basically doing a lot of rivalry games on the college side, and then we're going to be doing the holiday games on the NFL side. In other words, we're doing Texas State versus South Alabama, Nebraska versus Iowa, South Carolina versus Clemson, and Alabama versus Auburn. Then on the NFL side, we're doing Chicago versus Detroit, New York Giants versus Dallas, and Miami versus Green Bay, followed by uh, the Black Friday game between Las Vegas and Kansas City. Now, in between those videos, we're going to have the random trade review episode on Kitty Pride and Wolverine. Uh, I will probably get to Agatha all along, or Agatha and the uh, Darkhold, or whatever it was called. Um, I'm sorry, I have been busy. Uh, the Agatha Harkness show, I'll be probably doing that the first week of December. Um... And last week in November, we have two wrestling shows. We have TNA Turning Point and, of course, WWE Survivor Series. Those are on the 29th and 30th of November, uh, respectively. All right. See you all next time. Hey, guys. Remember that you can support my work at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions. Also, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell, so that way you can be alerted to further videos.